The Illinois Department of Natural Resources has decided to create this series of public service announcements to, at the beginning of the hunting season to get hunters thinking about safety. So oftentimes uh, we we used to hunting, we have years of experience, and we forget about the basics, the simple things that keeps everybody safe out in the field. So this is just a reminder, everybody start thinking safety before you head out to the field. Jason Sherman, J-A-S-O-N, S-H-E-R-M-A-N, conservation police officer. To minimize the risk of hunting accidents during the firearm deer season in Illinois, all hunters are required to wear a minimum of 400 square inches of solid blaze orange on their vest or jacket, as well as a solid blaze orange hat. When you're talking about 400 square inches of solid blaze orange, we mean uh, a vest that has approximately a 20 inch by 20 inch square on it. It doesn't have to be all together, but it has to be, the patches have to be large enough so it doesn't take away from the overall effect of a solid orange pattern to stand out in the field so other hunters can identify you as a hunter and not uh, a deer running through the woods. In Illinois, uh, we do not uh, allow a orange camo pattern. It has to be a solid orange pattern. The deer are colorblind, so orange really doesn't make a difference to the deer. The deer are colorblind, so it doesn't make a difference whether or not you're wearing orange or not. And that's why we say uh, the camo pattern is, is not acceptable, because if you get an orange mixed in with a camo pattern, then it might tend to rev uh, be reminiscent of reddish leaves in the timber and not make you stand out to the other hunters. Lots of times when hunters are out in the field they tend to get tunnel vision. They see the animal that they're, they've been dreaming about all year long and there's the deer out in front of them and they get tunnel vision on the deer. Well hunters need to widen their field of vision so they see not only the deer but what's beyond the deer. There might be another hunter in the background, somebody's hunting dog, uh, livestock of some type or farm machinery that could be damaged if they miss the deer. So not only look at the animal, but what is beyond the animal. Always play defense. Think, what if I miss? What is behind? What is the potential damage? We're trying to avoid situations where the hunter gets tunnel vision on the animal that he's targeting, a, a deer for example. Well, what happens if the deer all of a sudden gets spooked and runs and the hunter misses the deer. Well, if he's not taking, expanding his field of vision, looking beyond the animal, not only at the target species, but beyond the animal, uh, he might not have seen uh, the mobile home that was in the background and the, peep, the children in the yard or the livestock in the fence beyond. It's important that when the hunters are climbing up into their tree stands that they secure themselves with some sort of uh, fall restraint system so they don't actually slip off of the rungs of their, their tree steps when they're climbing the tree and hurt themselves. And then once they get up in the tree, it's better to have a full body harness type of uh, fall restraint system to hold them and prevent them from falling. A safe hunt begins at home. The first thing you need to do is leave a hunt plan with some somebody at your home so if you don't return at the designated time they know where to start looking for you. A fall from any height is still dangerous no matter how high up the tree you are. Uh, as you're climbing up the tree you might only be you know five or six feet off the ground when you slip and fall and break an ankle and if you're out in the woods in, in freezing weather uh, you could quickly succumb to hypothermia when you're stationary laying in the wet leaves so it's important that you, you had a, created a hunt plan, let someone know where you were going to be, and oftentimes it's a good idea to carry some sort of uh, cell phone 
or two-way radio so you can contact emergency help if there is a problem. Well, anytime you get near a roadway, you got to think it's not just you out there. There might be a person on a bicycle coming over the crest of a hill, a car, um, kids, dogs, anything on that road. So make sure when you come to the edge of the road that your gun is completely unloaded. You take the round out of the chamber, make sure the magazine is completely empty, you're completely unloaded. That way, there's no doubt if you would trip or slide in the gravel on the road that that gun is not going to accidentally discharge and hit anybody or anything that is on that road. Then you stand to get a uh, ticket for hunting on a highway. And that's basically, it starts out at the very minimum, a $75 ticket. And more importantly, it's nine points towards suspension of your hunting privileges.